So guys, this video is brought to you by Active Trades. They are a well-trusted brokerage. Um, they've been in the game for over 20 years. They are multi-regulated as well. And they also have increased client protection of over one million pounds. So very, very safe. Do check them out. Head to the description and let me know what you think of Active Trades. Uh, what type of trader am I? <laughs> Conservative. I don't know, mate. I don't fucking know. I'm Elliot Gwynn. I'm CEO at Samyon Co Trading. I joined the team back in, well, around 2017. So what I do is I sort of head up the operations, oversee risk management on the trading accounts, and I help develop and design the company strategy. So I've just got to the office. First thing I do when I come in is get a coffee. Normally we have the coffee fairy who makes my coffee for me in the morning. However, they're not here today, so I'm having to make my own coffee. When it comes to coffee, it's very particular what coffee we have. Um, so we don't touch the instant. We've got an espresso here, but we're not really, not really keen on espresso. So we've got imported coffee um, all the way from America. Uh, it's called Black Rifle Coffee. So uh, one of the guys introduced me to it from the office. Um, and it gets us through the day, um, you know, it gets us kicking off for the day. So yeah, I'm just gonna make myself a cup of coffee now. So normally in the morning, once I've got my coffee, of course, um, most of the time I do my analysis before I come into the office. So if I'm in the office, I'll do my morning routine, um, normally around 7 a.m., so before the UK open. Um, see, catch up what's happened overnight, Normally watch the close, uh, the US session close, so 9 p.m. the previous evening. Um, and then in the morning, first thing, normally check the markets, do my analysis at home, see what's happened overnight. And then obviously come into the office, and if nothing's set up or nothing is of interest, I'll have another quick check. And then part, part of my morning routine is to check on the overall traders. So at Samuel Co Trading, we have over 400 traders currently trading with us. Just do a brief check on the overall portfolio, how that's doing, you know, check the overall exposure that we have in the markets, and then obviously look to see what news we have coming out for the day. So today is Friday, um, quite, quite light on the news front. It's been quite a news heavy week. We've had CPI come out early in the week, higher than expected, and then PPI yesterday, again, a bit of a shock to the markets. So we've seen dollar strength come into the market, especially in towards the US close yesterday. Uh, the US dollar index closed back above 104 um, for the first time since sort of beginning of Jan. So that's quite a key um, observation we've seen in the market. And again, um, related to that dollar strength, we've seen gold pretty much erase its whole gains of 2023 so far. So gold had a really strong start to the year. It was up around 7%. However, the last few weeks we've seen that been uh, completely eroded. And at the moment it's quite an exciting time. We're looking to develop a new EA. So it's very early stages in that. Um, but that involves quite a lot of my time at the moment, sort of speaking with the coding team, getting that developed and then testing that, making any changes we'd like to make to that. And then again, um, once the changes have been made, testing it, um, checking for any errors and then looking to back test and forward test that. Um, so at the moment I've been doing quite a bit on that, work on that, um, developing the specification to get that built. I've always been interested in finance, um, numbers and stuff like that have always intrigued me, I've always been quite good at maths. Um, I went to university, didn't really know what I wanted to do, just knew I wanted to do something finance related. Uh, during my time at university I studied finance and economics. So some of the modules I was doing were related to investment management. Um, I then, as part of my university degree, I did a placement year at Lloyds Bank. In the retail side, I was doing, I was a credit risk analyst. So nothing to do with trading or anything like that. Uh, but this was back in around 2011, 2012. So not long after the financial crisis, uh, we were coming out of the recession um, and things were starting to look up for the economy and the um, peers in my team at the time were talking about Lloyd's share price and how their net asset value was below one, uh, making the share price very attractive 
So I put, put some money in, obviously not a lot, I opened an account uh, with like a traditional broker, bought some shares uh, and did very well from it um, quite quickly. Sort of at the same time, I was speaking with Sam. So I've known Sam since we were kids. Again, this is, you know, 10, 11 years ago now. Um, and around the same time, we were on sort of similar age, we were on sort of similar paths. I think he was at university and he was also looking into financial markets. However, he was going a different route. So he was going more down the FX, Forex route, which at the time I really knew nothing about. Uh, I believe he attended a seminar around in 2012, around sort of same time. Um, I was just getting involved in the stock side. He was going to more down the FX route and I was looking more the share route. So I completed my placement year at Lloyd's and then I went back to university to my final year of education. Um, I graduated with a first um, in finance and economics and then I got a job, um, stayed in credit risk, I got a job as a risk analyst at a large consultancy firm where I stayed there for three years. So at the same sort of time, Sam was working on Sam Young Co Trading. So it's still a very young company at that time. You know, we talk a lot about the markets and stuff like that. I was trading my own personal money whilst working. Um, and like I said, he was starting Sam Young Co Trading, starting to teach individuals to trade whilst trading his own money as well. So I decided to make the switch over um, and joined the Sam Young Co Trading team back in 2017. Um, yeah, really, you know, it was, for me at the time, it was a big step. Sammy & Co Trading was still quite young, still quite a small company. Sam didn't have many um, employers at that time. So I saw it as a risk, but a risk that I sort of thought I had to take. Otherwise, I could later on regress it in life. If I carried on doing what I was doing, I'd still be very successful in what I was doing. But it just didn't have, I just didn't have that drive or passion that I felt like I needed to. I didn't want to just coast through life. So I decided to take that risk back in 2017 and joined Sammy & Co Trading. Since I've been at Sammy & Co Trading, obviously the team's grown and grown, the company's got bigger and bigger. Just going to have a meeting with Liam, uh, going to discuss sort of the, the progress on the diplomas. Um, Liam's the education manager here at Sammy & Co Trading, so we're just going to have a quick meeting on how we're getting on with the diplomas. After you, sir. Yeah, sounds positive. Sounds like you've made really good progress, so good job, well done. Um, obviously, first programme starts in August, so not long now. I'm sure the students are really excited to get, get going with it. Yeah, it's good to be ahead of schedule. Um, however, yeah, it's just sort of getting everything finished and getting prepared for the first programme. Yeah. So guys, this video is brought to you by Active Trades. They are a well-trusted brokerage. Um, they've been in the game for over 20 years. They are multi-regulated as well. And they also have increased client protection of over one million pounds. So very, very safe. Do check them out. Head to the description and let me know what you think of Active Trades. It's lunchtime now. I'm gonna go for a, a jog, it's a nice day got a canal around the back of the office so just do like a, a 5-6k run around there and then come back uh, for the afternoon session pre-US market open around 1.30 so I'll be back in time for that. Go for a run, have some food and then yeah crack on with the afternoon. So Friday afternoon, uh, it's just before 2pm, US market opens at 2.30, just come back from lunch. So I'm just going to have a look, check on the markets. We had some news come out at 1.30, um, import prices, not really high impact or anything like that. Um, not from what we've seen earlier in the week, so on Tuesday we had CPI, uh, which came in higher than expected in the US. And then yesterday we had PPI, which again came in higher than expected. Fridays are normally quieter. Um, besides obviously the first Friday of the month when you've got an FP. Um, so maximum sort of looking for one trade on a Friday. Um, 
normally get quite a good move on Friday afternoons into Friday evenings. Quite bullish on a Friday. Um, so we're just going to have a look at the markets and see if we can see any potential setups and go from there really. The main pair I trade is the Dow Jones. So I trade that primarily intraday and then I have separate stock portfolio and I do a bit of FX, a bit of gold trading. But probably, you know, my bread and butter, 80% of my trades are on the Dow Jones. So intraday trades, so I, you know, close most of not all my trades at the end of the day and then start afresh. Doing my preparation in the morning, I'm looking for key areas, key levels, where I'm looking to either buy or sell, depending on the current trend direction, the current momentum in the market. More of a technical trader, I guess. Obviously, I have a keen eye on fundamentals. News is coming out in the day and any interest rate decisions, then I just stay away from the market or I size right down. Um, so I guess I'd say I'm quite conservative in my approach. I'm literally looking level to level. Um, and I, you know, once that level's hit, enter the trade, and then I'm very robotic, wait for the next level to hit, and then look to close out, if not all that position. Um, sort of stick to the trading plan. So we're just gonna have a look at the um, US Dow. US 30 index uh, Dow Jones. So <clears throat> pretty much from the start of Feb, we've been stuck in a range bound market. There's been a lot of indecision, a lot of uncertainty in the market. Um, with the ongoing news releases, uh, the market is unsure whether um, the Fed is going to achieve a soft landing in terms of avoiding a recession in the US with the rise in interest rates that we've seen because of the high levels of inflation. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we had CPI come out this week um, and this is the first one in a few months where it's been higher than expected. Um, so that caused some more choppiness in the market. I think the market was looking to break to the upside. It's certainly if that inflation came in lower than expected, I think we would have seen a breakout of this range we can see here. Um, here we can see the spike up here and in, uh, when in CPI was announced, it spiked down and spiked up and then sold off. Uh, back into the middle of this range that we've seen for the you know like three three weeks almost, um, and then yesterday uh, yesterday morning um, the market sort of rallied up into this um, upper quarter range um, we've got on here this red box, um, and we took a short uh, in the European session on Dow around 12 12 o'clock around midday, um, aware that we had. Um, PPI news coming out at 1.30, so however the sort of felt the risk of reward was there, it was setting up really nicely on the hourly, um, you had you know this consolidation here and you know some bearish pin bars, um, so we took that trade and then we targeted the sort of middle area um, of the lower quartile range, this green box down here that you can see on the chart, um, that came in very nicely, um, closed out around 3 p.m. GMT. Um, for just under 1.8%. Well, um, we then saw the market rally out of that range, so we could have taken the long here, decided against it. Don't like taking um, a, you know, the opposite side of a trade just after I've got out. Um, however, you know, it was a valid setup, could have taken it, and then rallied back up to the middle of the range. Um, and then a very interesting close in the US session last night in, from 8 o'clock into the close at 9 p.m. our time. Um, the market sold right back off and down and below and closed below um, that previous low of that day. Um, so a very bearish close um, into, into the US close. And then overnight uh, into Friday, uh, into today, we've seen the market continue to sell off. Um, and it's actually broken down below out of this range, uh, which it has done um, a couple of times before this month. Um, however, each time we can see when it's done that, it's been quickly brought back up. Um, however, today it's consolidated now for you know most of the morning. Um, you know about half an hour away from the U.S. Open, so seeing a bit of um, buy momentum come back in. Uh, we've got a Fed talker barking who's speaking at the moment, um, talking around the labour market and um, overall not huge deal um, that we've seen. Friday I'm generally quite cautious about. Uh, don't like to trade too much on a Friday. Obviously going into the weekend. Um, so however we might see a nice setup here. What I'm looking for 
is the market to come back up into this green zone um, and see if we get a retest of um, yesterday's lows and around the close price of yesterday. So I've just highlighted it here in this white sort of rectangle area. Um, you can see it's been quite a key level uh, for the past few weeks. Uh, when it has the market has come down to there, it broken down below it. When it's recaptured it, we've seen strong moves back off of it. Um, so I just want to see now we've fully broken below that, and we spent you know most of the morning um, below that level. I want to see if the if we can rally back up to there, um, and then see what price action we get back at this this box over here. So this this white clear box um, within this green box. Um, if I am going to trade today, it'll be a short off that level, um, assuming we get a nice setup there. So we're just going to keep an eye on it, set some alerts. Um, obviously, I don't want to just sit here watching it because it's nowhere near that level yet. Um, so I'll set an alert just below that level. Um, and if that alert gets set, then I can start looking uh, more closely at the market. And if it sets up, take the trade. If not, then so be it. Yeah, so my biggest win in trading. Back in 2014, my first big win was, uh, it was on a stock, it was Peer TV. So it was one of Sam's shout outs. Um, and in terms of my portfolio at the time, I went in quite heavy. I think it rallied, you know, three, four hundred percent in the day. Um, so it did very well from that. And then since then, uh, my other big wins have been Apple. I've done very well in Apple. Uh, that's something I've held for years now um, I continue to add to it as it sells off so overall as a percentage and as value Apple is probably my biggest win um, however in sort of a short period of time peer TV would have been back in 2014 that would have probably been the biggest one sort of that happened really fast um, whereas now I'm trading stocks more longer term and then day-to-day, -day, intraday trading, indices where I'm risking 1%, looking for 3 to 1s, 2 to 1s. Um, so in terms of big wins, it's not something that I really look for anymore. Um, however, my stock portfolio is something that I'm looking to build over time. Um, so Apple and Tesla are probably the biggest two actually um, that I've held over time and done very well. My biggest loss in trading, again, as I mentioned, now I'm very strict, risk management 1%, so my biggest loss was back in 2015, uh, so I was building a position in the Dow, so 2014, from basically 2012 up to 2015 we had a nice strong rally in the indices um, and it, all pullbacks were sort of brought up by the market and it continued to make higher lows, higher highs. Um, so I continued to do this in 2015 and uh, the market I think around it was around July I think it started pulling back June July time so um, I was looking to add and build positions I wasn't really well I wasn't I didn't have a stop loss or anything like that um, and I was just building the trade up because it worked so well the account was building nicely so I was just layering on positions um, and then in I think it was in August 2015 the market just dropped like a thousand points on the open um sort of just wiped me out 53 so 90 handles that's too much talking about a thousand dial point you know it's just too much all it took was a matter of minutes and nearly 570 billion pounds was wiped off u.s share values in wall street's infamous flash crash yeah that taught me a big lesson like you know you, you can get very um you don't want to get complacent with the market you don't want to get cocky because it can just that's it. All it takes is one freak day or anything like that. You know, a thousand points move on the Dow now that isn't that isn't that much. But back then in 2015, when the Dow was around, you know, I think it was about seven, eight percent move or something like that. I think the Dow was around 15, 16,000, and it dropped a thousand points. Um, yeah, that's my biggest loss. It's now half four, Friday afternoon. Um, we spoke about. Uh, potentially taking this trade um, early on today, um, we're on the Dow Jones. Uh, we're looking for a spike into this um, rectangular box up here, this clear rectangular box. We opened around the same sort of level where we filmed, um, and then we saw quite a strong spike up into that area and up above into it. Uh, we took the short um, as it started coming, rejecting that area. Um, time frame, it then closed below that area, um, and then in the second 15 minute, it then tried to spike back above it. Um, but again, rejected that, that level again, closed below, um, 
and now the tray is sort of just running down nicely uh, back towards the lows of the day. Uh, bearing in mind it's Friday, Friday afternoon um, and the US markets are closed on Monday because of uh, President's Day. Um, probably look to close this um, if it comes back down to the lows um, for around one and a half to one. Just got the tape profit there. Um, also just keeping an eye on um, S&P, which is at the moment right at the lows. Um, so here we can see S&P is setting off a bit stronger than um, Dow. So I'm just keeping an eye on this. If it breaks the lows, um, then I might look to hold it a bit longer. However, if it starts rejecting the lows, I'll probably just take this off for around a one-to-one. -one. Uh, mainly because it's Friday and obviously Monday's a bank holiday. So don't really want to be holding trades over a long weekend. Um, yeah, so that's, that's what we're looking at at the moment. So one tip I would give to traders, especially when you're intraday trading, is to remember to zoom out on your charts. It's very easy to get stuck in the moment, especially when you're you know, trading shorter time frames, to be very zoomed in and forget the bigger picture. So I always try and remind myself to zoom out, think about the bigger picture, because ultimately that's what's driving the market, whether you're technical or fundamental. So I guess that sums up sort of a typical day in the office for me. A few trades, um, some meetings, some work. Yeah, I hope you enjoy the content. Take care. So guys, this video is brought to you by Active Trades. They are a well-trusted brokerage. Um, they've been in the game for over 20 years. They are multi-regulated as well. And they also have increased client protection of over one million pounds. So very, very safe. Do check them out. Head to the description and let me know what you think of Active Trades.